All right. All right, all right. All right, you can say what you were saying. Okay, so what I was saying is about the Black Messiah theory. It looks like when it comes to one of our Black leaders and, you know, that comes up, tries to step up and, you know, help our community, they either go crazy or they just somehow be unalive some way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. or they're automatically now on drugs. I don't think that is uh, uh, just so happen to be a coincidence at this point. It's too yeah. much of the same thing. The same way, if I'm intentionally, if, if I'm slapping you, if I slap you once, that might be on accident. But if it's a repetitive thing, this is now, this is now intentional. So if you notice that all of these different black messiahs is just something happens to them, whether it be, you know, the Honorable Martin Luther King or our ancestors or Malcolm X or, you know, Marcus Garvey or, you know, even even certain ones like Tupac, where it comes to loving yep. your women and loving your mother and things like that. It's certain people just seem to just magically disappear. Nipsey Hussle that was trying to talk about Dr. Sebi. Dr. Sebi even said before uh, he died, he said, if I end up dying, I didn't kill myself. I didn't kill myself. Mm -hmm. Somebody is after me or something is after me. And lo and behold, he just so happened to die for having money, his own money in his pocket, you know, twenty six or twenty six thousand dollars when they knew that he was probably buying herbs. So mm -hmm. the thing is, anything that threatens this particular system, it is a problem. You know, whether it be even the new ones that came up, whether it be young Pharaoh or these other, you know, uh you know, people, they just seem to something happens to them. You know, this is not a uh, coincidence at this point. Even when people try to remove themselves from, you know, being systemically or indoctrinated or oppressed mentally, something happens to them. They either written off crazy and things like that. Yep. It's, it's, it's definitely intentional. And I want to say is that when it comes to the pharmaceutical company, when you was talking about sickness and, and, and talking about diseases and things like that, if, if I'm going to be protagonist or, you know, devil's advocate, if everybody, one thing I know is that someone in their lifetime, regardless of who it is, you're going to get sick, whether it be a cold allergies or whatever the case may be, someone's going to get sick. Why market the cure? when I can continue to have the sickness and you be dependent on me because most people want to survive, whether if it's for themselves or their family or their kids or whatever the case may be, they're going to want to survive. So, and a lot of people, you know, do not know how to use herbs. That's why they demonize spirituality or, or yep. herbal practices or these, you know, uh, um, these these particular people that know how to do or, or work with roots it's for the simple fact is it threatens a, a trillion dollars a trillion dollar uh industry in 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 today's society which is the pharmaceutical companies but the periodic table came from ancient chemic came from africa yep. how to mix these herbs how to mix these these this and this and put this together this will make this and if you put this together this makes this this is the same thing they demonize it until it until it can be stolen and now that it's stolen, they know how to package it up a little bit better, a little bit nice, a little bit pretty. Oh, it's in pill form. You don't need to drink that, uh, that nasty gook. Now it's not demonized. But they'll turn around because they do not know the chemical components and, and the mixtures of different herbs. That's why you have commercials on TV. Have you taken this drug five five years later? Mm -hmm. Have you or one of your loved ones died from having, you know, having this? If you listen to the end of some of these commercials, it is absolutely insane that the, the, the cure is worse than the sickness. I literally, one night, was up watching TV, and I think it was for a particular, uh, a, a specific uh, a sleep aid. And when I heard the end of the commercial, it was speaking really well. It said, this could cause erectile dysfunction, anal bleeding. It could cause uh, vomiting, diarrhea, suicidal thoughts, just to help you sleep. <laughs> just to help you. I might as well just be sleepless. I might as well just be able to suffer from insomnia because I don't want anal erectile bleeding. So, a lot yeah, of times, damn, baby, you know, they're, they're not marketing the, the, the cure, they're marketing the treatment, which is different because a treatment can go on for the rest of your life. Why would I give you the cure for certain things when I can market the treatment that will continue to have me money? If you look at yeah, but a lot of these, are, they don't have a patent number. In order for you to patent it, that means somebody must have created it, correct? Mm -hmm. 
none of this is coincidental, sis. What's your intake on that? I mean, that's my whole thought about when it comes to not just syphilis, but HIV, AIDS, herpes, and stuff like that. We, we're not going to make money if we give you the fucking cure. Like you said, all money comes if, if you're steady being sick. And you're steady depending on these drugs and these drugs. So we're going to come up with Medicaid. We're going to have all this shit of Medicaid, Medicare, whatever it is, so that you can still get these drugs and the insurance company going to pay for them because we got the insurance company in our back pocket. HIV. Why do, how, how do y'all have a, a pill that's supposed to prevent you from getting HIP, HIV or it's safer uh, if you're on PrEP or you're on this and on that? How the fuck do y'all know that, but y'all don't know the fucking cure? But then, that makes sense, yes. then you had Dr. Savory, uh that it's like I had a cure for herpes. I had a cure for HIV. I had a cure for AIDS. You need to get the mucus after stuff. And you had people going back testing negative for these same things that they was testing positive for. Why? Do, oh, oh, we got to get rid of him. He a muffin problem. Bitch, we're trying to make money off this motherfuckers. Where, where, did the, where did these diseases even fucking come from in the first motherfucking place? A disease that's so powerful that it will attack your immune system. Me, Jay, Julian, or Jackson have never had the fucking COVID vaccine. Why is it that we have never fucking been sick from fucking COVID? We have never tested positive for COVID. Even with indirect like access of somebody, we take our CMOS, our elderberries, and shit like that, our vitamins and stuff like that that you, to me, anybody is supposed to take. We have never been sick from fucking COVID. Why is it the second that you send your child to school, your kid gets fucking sick? And it's like, oh, well, they just started school, they around all those germs. Nigga, what? They're sick more than they actually are healthy when you send them to school. But I'm I'm demonized if I don't I'm not I'm not giving my child that shot. You you look back and the MMR shot is linked to autism, this shot is linked to that. Then what the fuck is in these shots? An active ingredient of this shit. Come on now. Then you look at people that have COVID that have got the COVID vaccine and stuff like that. And bitch, y'all sicker than me. I have never caught COVID and I have been in direct contact with people that have had COVID. I have never got COVID. I had to get tested for it. My boys have been in direct contact with fucking daycare workers that have COVID. That's why the fuck they're not in daycare no more. What the fuck I look like? And you're back at work two days later. Bitch, if my kid die, y'all gonna die. So how about I just might as well bring my child home because you don't know who and what the fuck I'm gonna send over there to make sure that you ain't in your kids die hope. Because I'm not going to play about mine. So I might as well not even just send my kids to school and keep my kids at home where they're going to be safe. And y'all not going to have a worker or a teacher testing positive for COVID. And two days later, y'all don't even retest this bitch. And she's right back working with my goddamn child. That immune system is still fucking building the fuck up, nigga. Like, make this shit fucking make sense. But that's perfectly legal, right? It makes sense to legally do this. It's a way around every fucking thing. I don't have time to pay for these clear, play with some of these clear people out here. I don't have time for this shit. Yeah. Another thing that I've noticed is why are they so scared of the kids that are non-vax if your vaccination works? That's my question. If your vaccination works, like you say, that you want everybody to take this because you know it works, then why are you afraid of the non-vax kids? Doesn't your shot work enough to protect you? So this is, it's a conundrum in itself. And just like the same reason they got in God, we trust on this dollar, be the same people that will sit there and, and, and demonize. I believe God put everything on this land that we need. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to herbs and things like that. So you didn't trust him enough to put something down here, some type of herb, some type of plant, well, uh, flower, vegetable, something that's going to be able to cure you. So you're going to go on ahead and, and, and try to eliminate certain things. But my question is, where is these things coming from because back in the day they didn't have so that means something must have created on top of that once again there's patents here why is there patent on certain on certain diseases that means if i put a patent on my product that's intentionally so that no one else can take my product correct mm -hmm. no one else can trademark this they can use it for something else then why is there patents on these diseases it's because they're created whether it's accidentally intentional on purpose i don't know but regardless is if your if your vaccinations work then how come a couple years later there is me, there is you know uh, uh, commercials asking have you taken these drugs so now you don't have to worry about being sleepless you got to worry about going to the doctor for rectal bleeding you got to worry about going to the doctor for suicidal thoughts now you're once again putting back into the pharmaceutical companies because even if i want to go to sleep and now this is giving me a bad side effect and now i'm i'm i'm, I'm suicidal 
I'm going to have to go to a, a psychologist that's going to go on ahead and prescribe me another drug that could give another side effect that will be worse than what I'm dealing with in the first place. This is a way to a system, a perfectly uh, calculated system to keep dependence. The same thing they did, they've been doing this. And they're expecting people not to notice a pattern. They intentionally killed all the buffalo or most of the buffalo in Americas to have the Native Americans dependent on them until they caused genocide of one complete race of people. They, they literally killed 119 or people. There was 119 million Native Americans killed along with their buffaloes. But they killed the buffaloes first because guess what? That was their main source of meat. Now, guess what? You got to depend on these stores. The same thing that they're doing right now. Uh, that don't do, don't use herbs. That's evil. That's of the devil. But they'll sit there and take those same herbs. If you look at the packaging and make some type of chemical mixture that is an offshoot of the the, the natural herb itself, market it to you and have you sick to where you're going to need another herb or another uh, pill or another medicine to cure what that what was caused from the first one. And 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 here goes the cycle again. It, can, it just completely continues. Mm -hmm. This got to stop. That's why they are afraid of this new movement of spiritualists coming into or, or coming into this great awakening. Because now a lot of people, this pharmaceutical companies is not is not selling as much. If you notice that before it was a lot of uh, medications on these racks. Now it's a lot of now they're joining the bandwagon, elderberry and all of yeah. this stuff. It seems like that that aisle is getting a lot bigger than it was before. Because they, they're realizing, huh, everybody's moving away from these medications. They're going to herbs. Hmm, let's market an herb. And even with theirs, there's still some chemicals in it. Yeah. Uh, the same thing with sea moss and all this stuff. Like, if you just take the sea moss, I can tell you the last time I have actually been sick. But I take sea moss and elderberry every day. And then it's not hard to grow the stuff. A lot of stuff you can grow. A lot of stuff you can make it into pills. You can do a lot of this stuff yourself. When you cut out the middleman and actually grow and know what's actually going inside your body and know what these capsules, well, you could buy capsules from any store for like maybe ten dollars, a hundred of them, a thousand of them for maybe ten dollars. Like, why are we steady sitting here giving somebody else our money? Like, it just makes no sense to me to continuously do that. But that's just me. Uh, you said something earlier. These whole what I'm saying, this HIV and stuff like that. How do it come from monkeys and this animal and that animal and there's no cure for it and it attacks your immune system so aggressively? HIV medicine, I think it's like for one pill or one one prescription, it's like I think twelve hundred fucking dollars. Like make this shit right. make sense. Why why are they so invested in like the LBGT plus? People don't know that that the same motherfucker on Black Lives Matter, right? It's all for a reason, it's all for a fucking agenda. Not saying that gay people are bad or nothing like that. But what I'm saying is, read their fucking mission statement. Their mission statement don't have shit to do with Black Lives Matter or Black Lives at fucking all. But if we sit here and target, if the LBGTQ plus target your kids and teach them the sexual stuff, this, that, and the third early, and teach them to cut off their dick, and it's okay to cut off their dick, or it's okay to want to have a dick, guess what? We have a whole generation of Black Lives Matter that don't want to, they don't want to be whatever that fuck they was born into. So we don't have to worry about them niggas no more. Like it's deeper than just people not liking gay people or I don't want this in my kids' schools and shit like that. No, you're you're supposed to raise your kids to respect anybody and everybody as long as they're not harming you or your damn family. But there's a bigger play behind it. So if we remove, we, we take them in and we put them in jail, mm -hmm. then we make this, we, we start these kids where they can't even process what the fuck they're even thinking at a very early age and be like, it's okay. We, we sit here and you look at whole body and he's sitting here and, and taking a, the sex offender registry and all this stuff and it's getting lesser and lesser and lesser and lesser stricter. So when you have these crazy ass queer people saying that they are a nine year old little girl and they're 25 years old, sir, on fucking campaigns and stuff like that, Oh, well, if I'm a little girl, even though I'm a full grown ass man, and I like this little boy, it's perfectly natural if he likes me. Nigga, what? Hey, hey uh, I hate, I hate to be the party pooper, but I think my motor just blew up, so I'm going to have to call y'all back once I call the company. Oh, snap. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm out. 
Okay, and, and another thing, I want to tell you what's bigger behind it. It's population control. Because a man, yep. if, if, if we market two men being together, we know that there's not going to be as many, you know, any as many children. If we market two women being together, it's not going to be as many children. And but not as many black kids, be, mainly. Right, and that's why they market it. Even as me being bisexual, I do not really like to consider myself part of any type. I just like women and men. But for technicality, then I would technically be in the LGBTQ community. Me, for for instance, is I feel like they're trying to break down. They've already removed the black man, but now the black woman became too powerful. The black woman is the most educated, educated woman, woman yep. on the face of this earth. So my thing is now it's the women in their and unfortunately it does disrupt the, the natural order of things because now a lot of us is working in our masculine energy we have to become that masculine energy in our in our household because either our man is gone or trying to work or we don't have a man so now we have to work in uh, an energy that is out of protective nature yep. you know what i'm saying now we're more aggressive now now we're not getting married as much it's really destroying because now we have options why well, have a man when uh, we, we, I, I can make, I can pay my own bills. I can buy my own car. I already got two degrees. I already got this and yep. that. But it's disrupting the household. It's disrupting the, the community itself. Because now, if you look at it a lot, people a lot the, the marriage uh, 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 rates is going down. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So not only did they want to remove the black man, they wanted the whole the whole black household is run amok. Mm -hmm. Now the women don't like the women are in the masculine form. The men is rendered useless, and the kids is gay. So now you have really no household that is productive. Be and this is the reason why. It's because a black man, I mean, a, a white male can only make a white child with a white woman. An Asian person can only make an Asian child with an a another Asian person. A black man can reproduce himself with any race whatsoever. And in a black woman. considered predominantly black, even if they're mixed individuals. They're still considered predominantly black because black is the predominant color. So, that's the reason why and is because you couldn't keep up with sheer population period you can't keep up with sheer population because in order to keep up with that then there would have to be more white males having children and that's how they're keeping up in a way is let's dismantle the black household so we can keep up with their sheer numbers because the black man's genetics are more predominant this is the problem here, and that's why they're adding them in sentence. Let, let's turn. We, we, if we, they're noticing that we're locking them up, we're shooting them too much. So, boom. Let's go on ahead and say, hey, we all love gay people. It's okay to be gay. Let's and that's why he sat there and bought Black Lives Matter. A lot of people don't know that the person that owns the LBGTQ Plus has been an openly gay white man for forever. But that's why he bought Black Lives Matter from whoever the fuck that black lady was that had it in the first place. So. It's a bigger picture than what people are actually paying attention to. And also, back in slavery, well, shit, I really feel like we still are oppressed, uh, oppressed and stuff like that. But back in slavery, they used to, what they call it, butt, butt fuck or butt plug or whatever the fuck they used to do to the black man in front of their whole fucking family so that you wouldn't have as much as respect or see him as that strong masculine man. The, the clear people have always had an issue. A lot of clear people back in the day and still to this day, not all, but a lot of them, have an issue with black men. That's why when it comes to slavery, you notice the only race that they sat here and do, they fucking cut their dick off, put it in their mouth and shit like that. You're mad. You're softy at the black man because you can never be a guy. You will never be that shit. You don't even... And another thing is, and that's the whole reason why, if you notice on a lot of pictures, these herbalist women, these spiritual women, they had muzzled their mouth and put a ball literally in chain around their face because that's how powerful their words, the, the, the black women was back there that they were scared of them speaking. So now they muzzled the women, they demasculated the man. What is the kid to do? You know what I'm saying? The kid is going to follow suit. And when they had enough people fear, that's the whole reason I believe they demonized African traditional religions because they feared control. They feared the control of the, 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 the black men and the black community had or the black people. So they intentionally and still to this day right now, they are still uh, you know, rendering the black household useless. They'll sit there, but it just like, for instance, I hear a lot of racist people 
turn around and say black people are lazy are we lazy now or was we or was we lazy back then when you was getting free labor so what is the difference wouldn't aren't you the ultimate lazy to go to a whole nother continent to pick up people to do a job that you can did yourself <laughs> that's the ultimate laziness and then if we're not lazy we're dangerous we're thugs we're this we're that we're, we're dangerous and we're thugs but excuse me didn't you steal us didn't you beat us when you look at godfathers wasn't there they didn't have no villain in their skin last i checked so how are we dangerous make that make sense because y'all seem like the most dangerous people when you look at people that sexually assaulting kids but is it mostly black people or is it mostly clear people are you serious so who's really dangerous? Gayness was not a big thing actually back in Africa. It's still demonized or looked at bad, you know. But if you look at ancient Rome and ancient Greece, the women it's all in there. doing their, you know, on, on their uh, honeymoon, they were still dressed up as males because they were so used or the men were so used to being on ships or being pirates or being pillaging and plundering that they was not used to sleeping with, with their women. So the women literally had to shave their heads this is actual history, shave their heads and dress in men clothes just to sway them into being used to heterosexual sex. But when you look at, uh, I'm just going to say the world's God or what's supposed to be their God or whatever. <laughs> uh, what is it? Uh, King James. Are you serious? This is a whole man that decapitated his fucking mom. And was raping kids and all of this other stuff. But yeah, we talk about black people and voodoo, hoodoo, whatever the fuck it is that we do, whatever whatever religion that we believe in. You talk about the people that do it. Motherfucker, y'all ain't no better. So don't sit here and talk about us. And you your, your own, you can't even clean your own backyard. It's not even fucking clean. Your grass is not green over there, motherfucker. Y'all worship a made up God. A made up guy that's so fucking made it, made up and y'all twisted the story so fucking much because y'all thought y'all had it, but y'all really don't. But this is some shit that we created. This is some shit from us that y'all tried to sit here. We damn it like food for us, by us. The fuck? And y'all tried to take that shit and take the Bible and y'all y'all rewrote some stories. Some of it's true. Some of it's not. You got this passage that's true because I really did get this. And this passage that, uh, I don't know. Like, wait, they, they think this... That's why the Bible contradicts itself so much and doesn't make no sense because they, they couldn't get the full story because it ain't for you to get. I believe, and then a lot of people, um, you know, I, I don't dislike my Christian folks. That's that's not what I'm saying. But I will say this is they will they have the King James Version, but if you ask a lot of them who is King James, they won't know, not realizing King James, actually, 40 years before he made his version of the Bible, he was studying dark magic. It's called, and he made a Bible, I mean, his book, of the, um, a book called Demonology, and that is how to do some of the darkest magic ever known, period. He was conjuring demons on his off days. He was, you know, vanquishing them, calling them in, you know, just like it's, it's something normal. He even did some of the darkest magic that was considered evil to even most people that do spiritual work or the craft, he was doing necromancy, and that was to bring people back from the dead. This is who King James was. He sat on the first throne of Scotland while he was the six, sat on the sixth throne. The, he was the sixth king of, of England at the same time, simultaneously. And he literally, you were sitting there saying to these herbalists, these spiritualists, these people that want to meditate and things like that, that is devil worship, but you were reading from someone that openly said, hey, I study Satanism. <laughs> make this make sense. We can't hear you talking. Nah, I was just nah. gonna take my shirt off and well, my little safety vest off and climb back in the bed and get back comfortable. <sighs> so I find that so weird because these Christians will demonize spiritualists and things like that when the Bible that they're reading is from a rewritten version by William Shakespeare and a man that openly studied uh, you know, Satan, Satanic works. <laughs> yeah, which was one of his Don't first books. Look it up. For the ones that are listening to this, take a chance, go ahead and Google 
since Google is a lot of people's friend. What is demonology? demonology oh no, they can uh, who they, wrote the book demonology. They can Google who King James was if they really wanted to know. And it's not a dig at Christians on my behalf either. Like shit, I believe in the shit till I actually was enlightened with something else. Like I, most black people are raised to this shit. The thing that made me start looking at the Bible and shit with one, shit just wasn't adding up with the Bible. Well, let me say this first. When my mom passed, she believed in the Bible. She was a Jehovah Witness. My grandma on my uh my sperm on the side, she's a Baptist. So it's a lot of Christian in my family and shit like that. But they, uh, I just, I just, uh. so it's not like I just don't like uh, people that are Christians. I just, you have to fucking like, and two black people really sit here and think, well, my golly. If I look back in the day with slavery, why in the fuck with the same motherfuckers that wouldn't let me eat, that sat here and treated me like shit, that made me breastfeed they fucking kids, I had to eat fucking pig feet, I had to eat fucking leftover shit, why in the fuck would they give me a fucking Bible that's supposed to help me spiritually? Come the fuck on. What the fuck have that? What the fuck did they do to us that it was so good back in the motherfucking day? I fucking wait. What the fuck have the government did for us for us to benefit from to this fucking day? I'll fucking wait. So when you start looking at shit like that, why in the fuck am I going to sit here and read a Bible that a motherfucker that don't even like me because I actually got fucking melon your bitch ass don't because you probably was creating a fucking lab, ho. Why in the fuck would I sit here and look at that shit and take that shit and be like, let me read every word and I need to live by this. Even in the Bible it says you should forget your slave master. Bitch, at what point did you not just ding, ding, ding? Maybe I shouldn't be reading this as a nigga. Make it make sense. Like the shit just, it literally doesn't make fucking sense. So when I start reading shit and reading shit and the shit don't make sense, how in the fuck is it even scientifically possible that a, a, a female came out of somebody fucking rib and shit like that? It sounds like something else that you took and you fucked up. Why is it that y'all don't understand the difference between God, Jesus, and what? You, 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 you forgot that part of the story? But I bet you the people that y'all sit here and try to enslave over here in Africa got the full fucking story though. Huh. That's why y'all don't like it. That's why y'all want the people in the United States of America just to sit here and watch this fucking square box because as long as you can try to square a box, which if you look at the people that actually do own like your news channels, your programming, your fucking your, your radio station, shit like that, they don't look like us. They have absolutely zero fucking melanin in their goddamn skin unless they stifling it out of one of these goddamn black kids that's fucking gone missing that can't nobody fucking find. So I'll even go deeper. They sense. want to be us all besides the besides the the bad living conditions. If you think about it now, uh, we was deemed, we was looked at bad and teased for our, our thick hair, our nappy hair, or whatever you want to call it, our four C quality hair. But we that was, was our fucking we, antennas, nigga. We need them motherfuckers, bitch. Right. And we was looked at bad for the big lips. I remember back in school, if you had big lips, da da da, they would make fun of you and call you this and call you that. And then even the big butts and the big titties. Those things, even if you look in back in slavery, Satarji Bartman, Honorable Satarji Bartman, Sarah Bartman, she these people was put in human zoos because they had big butts, yep. big titties, big lips, you know, hair that they never seen before. You get what I'm saying? They but now if you look at today's society, all of these elites is sitting there getting lip injections. Now it's so now you want to take those natural full lips that we have and you want to go on ahead and make them bigger than ours at this point. You get these ass lifts and ass injections and things like that. When we that came from us naturally. So and then if you look at even with the herbs, let's even go to the herbal situation. We was demonized for being herbalists. We was demonized for being spiritualists or or, or root workers or whatever the case may be. But what is the pharmaceutical company? Root work just just prettied up but, and, and, and put with a little bow and a nice packaging. That's all that is. It was demonized until it can be taken. Everything about us was demonized until it could be taken. Now you hear people talk about, yeah, I never owned a slave. My family was poor. Like I said, they want to, a lot of people that are racist, they literally have a jealousy deep down mm -hmm. inside. Even if you look at the black man's anatomy, it is scientifically proven that black men have longer penises or wider penises than other people you know what i'm saying 
black women have a smaller v vagina hole. That's why a lot of us have problems when it comes to delivering nowadays because our vagina is a lot smaller. So in the inside, this is things, but you see people getting, you know, penis implants and, and, and vaginal rejuvenation mm -hmm. because they don't have the elasticity because our skin is made of melanin. We're charged by the sun and the elasticity in our body is natural. That's what's going on. This, this has been a problem and a jealousy of who we are since the beginning. The, even when it comes to the Bible, the Bible, if you look at the Ten Commandments, they're nothing but a ripoff of the 42 laws of Matt that came from ancient Kemet. <laughs> so it's so much stuff that they took from us until they can label it their own it, it, so they this is how the process is let me take it well let me demonize it until i can figure out how to take it i take it then i give you something else in return that doesn't work and then we we elaborate the shit this is what happens in every single thing whether it be pharmaceutical whether it be looks whether it be anything about black culture even now everybody's pop locking and, and doing all of this now realizing that came from slaves that was practicing capoeira and stuff like that to practice their fighting styles without being beaten now everybody's a break dancer now all the asians break dancing pop locking and, and, and into black culture now all you know a whole bunch of whites is joining joining the bandwagon even when it comes to white rappers you know what i'm saying there were so many black rappers that's way better but because they're white rapping this they get the recognition look at iggy azalea she's no better than some of the worst of our, our, our black female <laughs> rappers More? you know what i'm saying but because it's in a white skin suit it is glorified <laughs> yeah that's even down to our inventions that was taken over y'all might have already said that but you know a lot of our inventions was taken and since we, you know, of course, didn't copyright it, couldn't copyright it or do none of that other stuff, it became a, a, a great invention for somebody who had the financial power and can beat you into silence. Yeah, but, you know, the patents exactly. was passed or made by black people. We are the ones that made it where she had to be fucking patent and stuff like that because it was taking so much of our shit. Yeah. But they don't talk about that part of history. Mm -mm. Now, yeah, they definitely don't talk about a lot of the slaves had the inventions, but they could not go up to, you know, the courthouse and say, hey, this was mine. They if they want to keep their face or keep them their 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 being, life being alive. Yeah, because yeah. remember, we you couldn't read or write. So, but yeah, we can read the Bible, though. <laughs> Right, but the first brain surgery was invented by a black person. Yep. But you think that they got the credit? They just finally gave them the credit about 10 years ago. They did this a long time ago, about 100 years ago. But when in ancient Kemet, you can look at the skulls, and they said they've already proven that ancient Kemet in Africa was already doing brain surgery. They was dang doing dental and hygienist yep. practices. They was actually pulling out teeth and putting golds in their mouth, literally, or actually putting gold plates over their mouth. They had we had golds a long time ago. Mm -hmm. We was rocking golds in ancient Kemet, even cutting our hair and having waves, uh, rocking waves with the uh, do rag. You know what I'm saying? We, we don't. They didn't call it do rag, but that's what they was doing. They was make dressing their hair in the papaya leaves, having it nice and smooth. That's why, if you look at a lot of, you know, the hieroglyphics, a lot of them men had waves. Mm. <laughs> And also, it, go, it goes like how she was saying, a high, uh, high, hieroglyphic uh, or whatever. Yeah. That was something that we did because we uh, write a word and it was also like pictures. That way, even if you didn't know how to read, you could still sit here and read. This whole English language and the, the reading and writing of English is so confusing. It's the hardest thing to sit here and understand or, or speak is because it came from Roman, Greece, and I think somewhere else. And we're automatically taught to go left to right. And if you pay attention to it, which makes one side of your brain bigger than the other side naturally. So in that case, shit, everybody fucking is bipolar and everybody have a chemical imbalance in their brain if you really don't look at it. But I ain't, I ain't gonna mess with that shit. And then when you look at stuff like, even in elementary or these schools and stuff like that, it's still stuff like where these kids they can use their imagination and they can learn and stuff like that. That's why they work so much better for smaller kids. It doesn't change when these kids get to the third grade. Y'all take the coloring pictures out the book. Y'all take all this stuff out the book that, that we need to use to uh, motivate our creativity, to, motiv to open up other, I would say open back up our third hour or something like that. We're not using it because we're taught now that everything is black and white and everything is on a paper. We're not going to have no pictures to reference to. You just need to know this stuff. 
where where, where did this stuff get created from? Where did the fuck did math originate from, and why? The math originated in ancient Kemet. Once again, it originated in ancient Kemet. And it also, there was math being done over in West Africa, which we would call the location of current day Nigeria. There was already doing divination systems called Ifa that, that had different types of numbers systems that will teach you this or show you this or show you this. So that once again was demonized until they can make their Greco-Roman numerical system. That is still out of whack to this day. That's what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the math that they're teaching our kids in school right now in America, what the fuck? That's why it doesn't make sense. Just like the Bible, it just doesn't even a make lot sense. Of people don't, a lot of people don't even realize that the the European educational standard came from Nazi Germany, and that is a fact. That the educational standard that we are doing now came from Nazi Germany. Crazy. As hell. That is scary. So it was not, it was not meant for the black mentality because the blacks was using the left and the right side of their the, both sides of their brain because our medulla, our pineal gland, is actually bigger than whites their pineal gland was calcified even um they did this it was a study in the army that when certain soldiers was passing and things like that um they was noticing that the black soldiers had a bigger pineal gland than the white soldiers so they start doing scientific studies that wow these people have an extra piece or a larger piece in their brain that helps them think on top of regulates their temperature regulates their 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 skin tone and everything a lot of us we can be lighter in this in the winter time than we are in the summertime because we are charged literally by the sun even when it comes to emotions so because their pineal gland is so small even their emotions their chemical imbalance is actually more so uh, uh, is bad for the simple fact is their pineal gland that's pushing out their chemicals in their body, in their, into their blood line, blood is thrown off. So really they would technically be more bipolar when a white, when, when white people um, are, are happy, their dopamine levels are way more is, 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 is kind of jacked up as opposed to ours. Literally our emotions are telling what chemicals is going off in our system and theirs is fucked up. Not trying to be funny, but theirs is because they have, a genetic mutation and that's because of their pineal gland so it goes all the way into science that their science so even the ones that want to deny this information like i said this is your science that proved this not a thought <laughs> this is not a thought or an opinion argue argue with your mammy argue with your mammy or your mama argue with scientists because they try to back things up with facts that's facts fact of the matter is our pineal gland is bigger fact of the matter is your pineal gland is mutated due to you know the process of uh the evolution that you went through don't argue with me argue with your scientists because you damn sure demonize and unalived ours just like that and not only that we also have an actual we have actual melanin, like liquid gold in our brain, actually. But people don't know if you're actually like black. I knew I was young and rich. Shut the hell up. Hey, hey, but look how much uh melanin is worth uh per ounce. Yeah, and I'm why a whole 174 that? pounds. I should be balling. But why is that? Know. Then you look at the trafficking and all this stuff. Hmm. It makes you wonder. Or does yeah, it not? They, they they trying to use our skin to make hey what? wait a minute. Now this 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 goes off a subject a tad bit, <clears throat> but the human hair in the couches and stuff. That's for the, as far as cushion. Yeah. Uh, like. Oh uh, yeah, people forgot about that part of history. Yeah, yeah. like there are, are antique couches right now in some of y'all grandparents' house that is full of slave hair. Mm-hmm. It ain't no cushion. It ain't none of that orange stuff. It is straight hair. Facts. Okay, I just had to throw that in there. I was, I was, I got off track when we was talking about selling, selling bodies and stuff like that. It been our only fans. They been wanting this melanin. You know what I mean? You, do you know why? It's because our hair is naturally buoyant and our hair is thicker. So if you notice, when a lot of us take a shower, it might be flat for a minute, but once that, once your hair dry up. Poof. You got a whole fro, and I'm telling you that thing is tough, even with the shrinkage. You know what I'm saying? So it makes a good cushion. Mm-hmm. So it might shrink, but it makes it more compressed. But it makes it fluffy to sit on. So a lot of these people, even when it came to 
even down to the way we dress. That came from Africa. Think about some of these popular shoes that was going on in Greco-Roman times. They was made of gator. You know what I'm saying? Alligator shoes. Alligator shoes, you know, the suits and things like that. Alligators aren't even indigenous to, to Greece and Rome. <laughs> Where'd you right. get them from? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Where you and still to this day, the Italians are very big on wearing gators. Where, where you poachers come from? Hey, that's another history whole thing within itself. Poacher. Yep. Facts. See, I knew this was gonna be lit. I just had, you know, I've had, I've been, I've been kind of quiet over here because I got, a, I, you know, I'm, I got a lot of stuff going on, but I'm still here. So I know y'all been lit. I've been trying to listen to y'all in my headset while fumbling and doing other stuff, but uh. You know, my brain ain't ain't resonating with all of the the uh, adequate black manness that I possess. Um, but as far as skin complexion, as far as reading what side of your brain does what, a lot of people nowadays that have quote unquote mental diseases. Don't have mental diseases at all. It's only the only the d- disease that they have is they use them both sides of their shit, functional in a motherfucker, the way probably it should be. We all should be mentally disabled. But some of us have been programmed to the point where anything outside of the program looks off, looks odd, and you're scared of it. You're told you're told to fear animals in the wild, but yet but, hey, the only time you can have you ever seen an animal attack a black person in Africa, though? Not to my knowledge, but the only time you can go see these animals in the wild is when you're guided by a white man in the safari or a white man at the circus or all of that type of shit. You can go see these very wild animals that they tell you to fear. Now, okay, so let me let me let me get real scientifically stupid for a second. A brown bear and a black bear, right? You find one of them, somebody's telling you that you need to kill it, get rid of it, or put it in the zoo, right? They need to capture it. Animal control has to come. But have y'all noticed that polar bears are the most cute bear? A polar bear is cute to society because of its color. Has nothing to do with what the fuck it is because a polar bear, in my opinion, will eat your asshole backwards. That is true. But that still goes to that fucking programming. Anything black, black people, like black male... Versus if I was to go to court wearing all white, I'm going to look pure, I'm going to look holy, I'm going to look this. And really, you got that from my father, bitch, but I digress. So when it comes to all of that, but if you were black, uh, you only wear black at a funeral or the death of someone and this, that, and the third. But yeah. if you want to look innocent, whole, and pure, you were white. Yeah. Now, now to go right along with that, has anybody ever, I mean, I know this is real petty of me, but I, this is what I deal with every day. Has anybody ever wondered why the fuck your tires are black, the roads is black, but the lines you come, the lines you go across are yellow and white. Like I ain't trying to just say everything is a black and white thing, but if you think about it, I've never seen a car with any different color tires on it than black. But that's because your luxury vehicle sits on it, if you ask me. So, go ahead, go ahead. On top of that. It has to do with strategic marketing. It has to do with strategic marketing, period. Um, for the simple fact, even when it comes to vanilla, the crazy thing is, do you know the original vanilla bean is black? Black. <laughs> the original vanilla, so they really marketing. Did you toilet paper is not originally white? They bleach it white. It was really brown. It comes from the trees. So, yep. if you notice, when it comes, and that's to how you still getting all these diseases and shit like that too. Exactly. Yeah, the company still make money on. Right. And, and and then on top of that, if you look at our food, anything that's considered they, they consider white is purity and black is evil or dark or the only time it's not is when it comes to Black Friday is because they were selling our asses for for cheap at dirt cheap prices. But when it comes to strategic marketing, they're even racist. They did this on purpose. If you notice that most of our food companies most of our fast food joints is either red, red or, or yellow or yellow. 
It's mm -hmm. because we automatically, we have something called associative disorder. Most Americans do. When we see red, it makes us stop or slow mm -hmm. down. What, that's why they have our brake lights red. You know what I'm saying? Stop, slow down. So we are all unintentionally, subconsciously equivalating red with stop. That's why they put red in these fast food joints. Whether you see McDonald's, Yellow, um, Burger King, Burger King, Rallies, O'Reilly's, uh, uh, Crystals, Checkers, uh, um, KFC. <laughs> Yeah. So, and if you notice that things that are a darker color, they're usually after, it, that means it's late night. Taco Bell, open later than usual, late night. Pizza Hut got black and had black in their signs, black, white, and red, because that lets you know, hey, we're up late night. This is intentional strategic marketing on purpose, because they literally are using our associative disorder that they literally cause for us to yep. look at certain colors as certain things so of course when automatically if they can do that with red red brake lights automatically people that are not used to black people they see black oh my goodness it's bad if yeah. you think about it, black cats demonized, black dogs in trucking world demonized, black people demonized besides mm -hmm. black friday because that means get your black ass for free or get your black ass for a low price so yeah. if you notice that's the only time if you notice you never see no no doctors with black on. hey but you do see them evil ass judges with black on exactly yeah, yeah. shit that's is crazy mm -hmm. shit is crazy crazy like i'm, I'm gonna get y'all one right here Look at this. Soles of my shoe, black. Right above them. But hey, also right. when you go to the history of why they even put soles on our shoes and, and soles in our feet and how it disconnects us from the actual earth and shit like that. Yep. Because you go outside and go and put your feet in the grass if you ain't got no stickers. I wouldn't advise you to just stick your feet in the lawn that you don't know got stickers or not because as a child I, I understood that that was a horrible thing to do but if you can go outside and stand barefoot and see everybody used to be like man oh country foot barefoot dusty foot all of that well yeah, but if you connect you knew, with mother, mother nature and get in there yeah. and recharge and all of it tell you what go take your black ass outside right now and hug a tree and tell me how you feel when you let that bitch go Try it. You're gonna feel a lot better because it lets off endorphins. And just like yep. for instance, they're the Native Americans. There was a whole tribe called Blackfoot. They could outrun you when you can have your sneakers, cleats, or whatever you want on your <laughs> fucking feet. And I'm telling you, it was not going to outrun a Blackfoot. That's yeah. why they called them Blackfoot. Their feet got hard at the bottom. They didn't need shoes. They were so connected with the ground, you couldn't hear them coming, and it could be a hundred on your ass. But before you fucking know it, you unalived. And that's why <laughs> it's because they're trying to dis uh, uh, connect us with the universe. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. it's already proven. They've And this is their science. Like I said, they can argue with their science. Science shows that actual recently in, in, in this new science, scientific poll or whatever, that plants can feel and hear you and they have their own connections. They have their own connections. So they know the plant that's next to them. They actually communicate with the plant that's next to them. That's why so when one dies, you'll notice that another leaf next to it is dead. That's another leaf next to it. If you put two plants that is dying, I mean, one that's alive and one that's dying right next to each other, the other yeah. one starts dying too. It's yep. because of the connection. So this is their science say this. So why are you trying to disconnect black people that came from these forests, came from these jungles, came from the Serengeti, <laughs> away from the connection with the, the earth? If you notice that, just like just like Sis was saying, when you go to Africa, you see it would be black women walking around with 15 damn lions and tigers and shit. I swear. <laughs> and they and them and they literally when she stopped, they stopped. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know some, yeah. some uh, there's some people out there, you know, that got pet hyenas, and I'm telling you, they like pet puppy dogs. But when they try it, they got to do it in the circus and they get dragged off the stage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. By they throat. Talking about don't hurt the tiger. This is, this is what we're going through. We're literally trying to be everything about us besides and the this some plant shit that everybody should be drinking. Because it helps. Chlorophyll. You. Yep. Like this shit'll turn you fucking green and it's straight plant shit. 
You said it'll turn you green? Yeah, if I dropped it somewhere, it, it's oh, so yeah. pure. Yeah. And here's the thing, if you look at them Hindu gods and old gods, if you look at them on these hieroglyphs, they're green and black. Have you ever heard somebody say they're so dark skinned they blue black? They really probably reach God's self. Like, <laughs> but that's that's another story there. I can tell you they can stand out in the sun and and, and, and that sun ain't gonna burn them. They ain't gotta worry about now uh, uh sunburns whatsoever because they are, are connected with the sun itself. But some people gotta come out to the beach and things like that. Some of these, you know, clear folks like she was saying, they go to the beach and, and, and the sun will burn their ass up and turn them into leather real fucking fast or beef jerky real, real fast. And <laughs> if you notice that how but they'll sit there when they show ancient egyptians and things like that why are they whitewashing them if this if there was no sunscreen back then you would have been burnt the fuck up and let's say let's just for sake of conversation say that there was white people that was living in them harsh environments when they evolved to be darker by now <laughs> well, yeah yeah the same way we evolved that when we in the when we are away from the sun we get light skin we, we we get lighter. Every black person probably that that is in a hot uh, hot summer and a cold winter, they know that their skin is completely different complexion. Yeah, I'm one of them black people. Then how come they have it? Hmm. How come they have not evolved to be darker by now? Then if they were the originals in Africa, because people keep forgetting that ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt is still on the continent of Africa. It's not in Europe. It is in Africa. It's still part of Africa. So you telling me that uh, that whites originated in Africa? No, blacks originated in Africa. At one point, we are still um, a couple million years older than that. So we came there. We was there first. So mm -hmm. how in the hell did if you can't survive this sun, this sun and at all these clouds, chemtrails and everything else, and you're burning up like fucking hot wax, then <laughs> how did you survive Africa, the African sun in the middle of the desert without yeah, dang burning up or your kids being darker and your kids' kids being darker and at least those sect is darker people? How are you yeah. still white? Yeah, because right I survived. I survived that Iraq heat, let me tell you. That that hundred and forty something in the shade, hundred and thirty, forty in the shade. Shit. It's a dry heat though. But goddamn it, listen. It ain't nothing like this heat over here. So I know damn well if y'all ain't burnt up in this humid heat, that dry heat, y'all ain't changed colors yet. Shit, something ain't right. And why y'all not bald is my question. That would be my next question because their hair is too thin to deal with the sun's rays. It would have burnt their shit clean up out their goddamn head. So why are y'all still have hair? Y'all should be bald. Yeah, and it's too oily. Exactly. It would have fried already. <laughs> by natural evolution, it should have been fried off their head by now. Yeah. But if you Our go into a colder climate... You can survive. We go into a colder climate. It's it's an adverse reaction for us because our bodies are are designed to operate different. No matter what sun is outside, a cold climate for us does us real bad. A cold climate, and I, I say that to say this: I've been around and watched people come outside in wintertime in tank tops and basketball shorts, and it's like, dude. You know, in the hood, it was like, man, that's that white folk shit. You know what I'm saying? Because we bundled up and covered up. They outside, that's because that's y'all natural environment. And our natural environment is not that. That's why you notice that people, black people that stay in a cold climate too long, they start having skin conditions like eczema. The skin dry out. Their, their skin is having a reaction to being away from you know the natural the natural sun There's, their their skin has a whole negative reaction to it so yep. it's because we are people of the sun that's what they call us before all of these you know textbooks and science or, or or their science we was considered people of the sun while they were considered people of the ice so mm -hmm. 
<laughs> this it makes sense. That's why they don't get cold as quick as we get cold. They'll be skiing in Alaska and in, in the Alps and shit, and and be perfectly fine while we shivering our ass off, ready ready to get in front of a fire really fast. Is because yeah. we're used to the hotter climate because that's where we're from. So this is another thing. If if you notice, a lot of it has to do with stealing. Whether we been stole, land been stole, people been stole, looks been stole, sex been stole, titties been stole, ass been stole, everything that you can think of about <laughs> us has been stolen, literally. Yeah. Even down to our knowledge, been stolen. So even yeah. our culture is stolen. What has not been stolen is the question. And in the, and for the Bible thumpers that are that are you know listening to this, think about the book of Obadiah when it even says in the Bible that you know Esau, these particular people, um, will covet and steal everything. It says it, if they said you'll steal the grapes, will you leave any gleanings left for hmm. your brother? You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, they can argue with their Bible that they're reading. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just a messenger, literally. So, I just don't understand that, you know, people aren't seeing this enough. What what part of cognitive dissonance got us so bad where a lot of us is not waking up to common sense? Like, common sense really is not common right now. It really isn't. You can sit there and see that there's no dinosaurs in the Bibles, but we're pulling these motherfuckers up out of the ground with no problem. We can sit there and say, you can hear it and say, they hear it, that the 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 cradle of life is in Africa, yet they're sitting there saying, this is my land. This makes no sense. They'll sit there right. and demonize herbalists, but turn around and have pharmaceutical companies that they're building a whole, you know, country off of you know that they'll sit there and say get out of my country but you brought us here uh, you right <laughs> right you can't return stolen goods first of all second of all you're sitting there saying about how bad these native americans and and you know their drunkenness and all of that stuff is but y'all the ones that created uh, you know y'all the ones that was 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 sending liquor over here you know what i'm saying why wouldn't I? You, you have them literally in a little space of land while you took the rest of their whole entire country. You even, even America is named after a, a colonizer named Amerigo Vespucci. Like, come on, man. How much cognitive dissonance are we going to continue to tolerate or act like we don't see? How disconnected are we really? I wonder for Jay to come in. Even with the diseases, though, sis, that syphilis, there was a syphilis experiment. They was literally giving black men these, these black slaves these shit. That's the same uh, thing I think we talked about it earlier. Yeah. Mm hmm. The syphilis experiment, they literally was, was shooting men up with syphilis so they can bring that shit home. And they're talking about they don't know. How did you do this syphilis experiment? Where did you get the syphilis from to shoot people up, but you don't know where it came from? Come on, Because they made it. <laughs> shit. They made it, and we would say test guinea pigs, per usual. Right. So how did you, and then like the one, there was um, an honorable sister that they stole her whole DNA to make um, and made her whole, her whole system uh, uh, experiment. And then that's where they get most of these manufactured drugs from. I forgot her name. Um, but yeah, they had finally apologized after she's already dead. You know what I'm saying? And to her family, like, yeah, we, we done stole her DNA to practice uh, this and this and, and, and make these different, uh, you know, medications and shit. My bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, this goes so far back. Racism is so serious and we're just playing ignorant. Even when it comes to they'll be quicker to give uh, a white person with a 600 or 500 credit score a, a house before they'll give somebody that 700 credit score that's black, uh, you know, any type of loans and things like that. This is ridiculous. Look how many of our business owners, small business, small black business and most black most businesses is ran by black women, but we are, it's so hard for us to even to get a loan or a grant. They make us have to jump through loops and loopholes and things like that just to get a small grant, but they'll give those out to the white community so fast. Mm -hmm. 
All right, Jay, I think you found in her. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck. It kicked me out. I guess shit got too real, and we ain't even live like that. That pissed me out. <laughs> For real. Because we talking to, I think that's why, dang, I got booted out. I'm like, nah, because you know they they had removed, I we used to talk about this type of stuff. And certain platforms, mysteriously, they said they don't, they lost my data. But it was just for these type of conversations. The rest of my videos are still up. Yeah, because they pull the shit. Right. They lost it, all right. Like it never existed. Like it never existed. They lost those particular videos. How do you lose videos? Gee, you don't. They just that's what they want you to believe. That's 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 they knowledge that they tried to input in into your situation. That shit don't exist like that. You ain't lost nothing. Lose these nuts. Anyway, but you got anything else to like another topic? Oh, cause if not, we can end this. I don't know. I think I think for the first for the first go round, we tapped in at an hour. Yeah. Even though it's been in. Really, it's an hour and thirty minutes. For real. I just have to put them together before I upload them to platforms. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah. I think I think I'm straight. Like, I think this is something that we can do. Uh, that's gonna be lit. Next time, I'll be a little more involved and active. But my night went from chill out. Y'all see me in bed, damn near about to go to sleep. And I got that call and I was like, oh, shit, chicken chaser, time to go. And shit, it's been big ass piles of oil every which way. So I got an issue that I was trying to handle. So I do apologize to those of you who got a chance to miss me up in here. Uh, but I am at work, you know what I mean? So. It's, it's gonna get greater later. I got in on what I should get in on, Boy, and you know, enough. yeah. So you know, it is what it is. I'm just gonna slide on out of here when it's over. Uh, they probably booted sis right then again one last time. And that's what I was thinking. I just was like, dude, I'm just gonna let it let it ride because it's really at the end of it. So you know, it it been a lot of it been a lot of technical stuff, but I'm glad she was able to get on here and get in here. And get a, a feel of it and when the when we actually doing this live and people are actually bouncing off with us on stuff on certain stuff that's when it's gonna become stupid lit and uh you know sis will be able to get in there and see what we see when we live because our people fuck with us so boy they gonna they gonna love her just the same you know what i mean so I'm here. Like, I can't go nowhere. I got no oil in my motor. None. Dryer. Okay. They, they, I can't get roadside assistance to come out here. Uh, or whatever you call them, people. Roadside. I can't get them out here till the morning. So, I'm here, which is what I was going to be anyway. So, like I said, a lot of stuff may be like, damn, what, what, what? But it might not be meant for me to take that ride tonight. So, you know, this is one of those obvious things. My truck has been everywhere today alone. You yep. see me. You know what I mean? And so when I parked back over here, where I was parked at was the last spot of oil that I sent you. So it's been leaking. I just happened to drive over here and do what real drivers don't do, which is a pre-trip, and I didn't just hook up and take off. If I had a hooked up this trailer and took off, I wouldn't I wouldn't have made it on the freeway. I have no oil. When I say none on the stick, none on the stick. So, yeah. But anywho, uh, I just look at it, instead of a depressing standpoint, I just look at it as whatever I'm being protected from down that dark road I was finna go down, I'm cool with that. Because I'm right here. And I can politely crawl in my bed and finish talking to my wife. No sweat off my brow at all. Normal situations, I'll be hot right now. Damn, they're talking bad about the truck and the situation and all that. But I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it differently. My life could be spared right now just because I didn't leave the parking lot. I got the message. <laughs> I understand the assignment. I'm cool. This chicken is in the same place it's gonna be. Well, I guess that's the show. I have to put these together before I actually 
Love it all on for later on today, clearly. Right. Uh, Y'all can follow Scan the QR code to follow this uh channel, follow the show, whatever you want to do. Uh, you have you want to come on the show? There should be a link in the description by the time I get through with this, so you can come on the show. You can text the little code. Uh, you can text the uh phone number for topics as well. You can come be a guest on the show. Everything is pre-recorded, so don't think that you're gonna scan that QR code, get on the show, and be talking goofy and your shit gonna be aired because it's not gonna be live like that. Playboy. Uh, and yeah, and all of the stuff that I wore today and stuff like that will be on the and down in the link down in the description. Uh, check out the Amazon playlist, follow everybody's social media, that will be down in the description as well. And I guess we'll see you on the next one. Peace.